that introduction. My name is Liz and I am going to be your guide today to the Chicago Children's Museum. So welcome, bienvenidos, welcome in, bienvenue, welcome in, konnichiwa, ni hao. So we are going to be exploring three spaces and in those spaces, you're gonna meet some of my other friends from the museum. So first we're gonna play in Zoom Rune. Then we're gonna check out a brand new sculpture here at the museum. And then lastly, we're going to take a daring climb through our ginormous climber, Cloudbuster. Throughout this webinar, if you ever have any questions, our friend Natalie will be in the chat to help you. So right now I'm gonna change my camera around so you can explore the museum in first person. So now we are entering Zoom Room. Zoom Room started back in 2014 when a staff member here wanted to create an exhibit to explore his favorite toy from his childhood, which was Matchbox Cars. So as fun as it is to just play with Matchbox Cars, you're actually getting an opportunity to learn a lot about science, physical science. How does gravity impact how a car moves? How does the ramps? How does all these different other things that will happen? So to play in this area, I have enlisted my friend, Kim. Hey, hi everybody, I'm Kim. <laughs> so the first track we're going to play on is this one. So with this track, what you can see is there is a gong right here. What Kim and I would like to do is have a car crash into that gong and make a loud noise. So we need to predict which of these tracks will hit that gong. If you would like to play with us today, you could also think at home, which one of those tracks, the green one or the orange, there's the green one or orange, do you think is gonna hit that gong and make a delightful loud noise. Hmm, let's see. Kim, which one do you think will hit that gong first? Liz, I think it's going to be this green track. Yeah. You think it's gonna be the green track? You know what, let me take another look. Hmm, let's look at what that green track does. It goes down, it goes up, it goes down again, and then whoosh. Let's take a look at that orange one. The orange one starts lower. And then it goes the same height up as that green track. And it goes down. All right. Oh, and you can see we did <laughs> make it a little easier for ourselves today because sometimes we have this challenging thingy bob here that <laughs> will knock your car off the ramp. So that's, that's the official Zoom room name. Theme <laughs> thingy bob. Wow. Thingy bob. All right. So how about we give that green track a try? Let me get in a good position for us to watch that car zoom. All right, so let's count down from three, everybody. So everybody at home too. Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> what happened? Okay, so as scientists, we know sometimes we have to do our experiment more than once. So let's give it this a go one more time. All right, are y'all ready to count down from three? Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> yes. Did you hear that? So Kim, did you notice anything that you might've done differently that time? I did use different cars. Uh, so that might also be a variable. The cool thing about Matchbox cars is there's so many different kinds. Yeah, let's take a look. Oh, that's something else that's really fun about this exhibit. When you come back to the museum, when we do reopen, which we don't know when that's gonna be quite yet, summer is when we're thinking it's gonna happen. We have hundreds and hundreds of these cars. So don't worry, when you come to play, <laughs> you will be able to find a car. So how about we do this one more time, just to see if we can get this to happen again. Three. Oh, are you gonna try both? Oh yeah, we haven't tried the orange one. Kim is gonna be daring and try both. Three, two, one. 
Woo! <laughs> we did it. And that, let's see what happened with the orange track. See, I think because it started so much lower, it didn't get the acceleration that the green track got, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good reflection, Liz. Thank you. Yeah. So all of you at home too, feel free to also talk to each other about what you see happening. Why did it work? Why didn't it work? And what's also really fun is in this exhibit, just to give you the full experience, we have talking points up here on the ceiling for you. So if you're with your family and you're like, how can I ask some good questions? You can compare, compara, que pasa si, what if, try again, prueba, test, right? So lots of questions you can ask. So Kim, do you think we should move on to our next track? Okay. I think we should, Liz. Let's do it. Okay, I'm really excited about this track. So before I tell you what we're gonna do, oh, and I have to introduce another one of my awesome friends. This is Alex. Alex is gonna help us with this track. Alex is also helping us today by keeping track of our time, which is very important. Okay, so let's think about what do you think we might be doing here? So we know we have these ramps on both sides, and we're playing with matchbox cars. Okay, what do you think we're gonna do? That's right, we're gonna crash test them, right? So if you are a car designer, if you're someone who wants to pursue that as a career, you might actually work with crashing cars. So what we want to do is not to prevent a crash. <laughs> we want to figure out which track to use to cause a crash. So what is your prediction? Which tract, orange or blue, do you think is going to cause a car crash? Hmm, let's take a look. So again, using physical science, you can look at the angle, how you think going up and down or straight down will impact it. Mm -hmm. Talk with your family or just think in your head. What do you think is going to happen? All right, Kim and Alex, which track do you think we should try? I think we should try the red. Want to try the red? I, I like it because it has, it has this curve here. So I feel like it might go faster. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Let's give the red a try. So should we count down? Three, two, one. <laughs> it was so close oh my gosh we we're so close y'all all right so but yes let's let's give this another go all right are you ready three two one oh. <laughs> see this is funny as the cars move they they get to different places. So what, where did they land on the floor after you let them go? Pretty far, right here. So, so right there? Yeah, I and mean, I, think, I think this yeah. is your car, Alex. Yeah. Right here. Oh, wow. Where's your gut line? So do we want to try the red again, or do we want to now try the blue? Okay. I, think, I think we should try the blue. Let's do it. Okay, are we ready? We're ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> so this time they didn't go quite as far like they ended back in our collector oh wow this car didn't even mine, make it off the track yeah mine didn't even get off the track all right so again this is a fun part of this exhibit is the practice right trying again and again this creates resilience in all of us right and also, if you want to pursue science, I have some scientist friends who are often very frustrated if their experiments don't go exactly as planned. So let's see. I think we should try one or two more times. Okay. What do you think, Kim? Can we change it and have two cars on this track and two cars on that track? That's oh. What if? What if we do that? What if we change the variables? We change the situation by having two cars on each one. All right, let's give it a go. All right. 
three, two, one. <laughs> they just seem to zoom right past each other. They are zooming. They, they are, zooming. are zooming. Okay. So should we try that one more time? Let's do one I more time. So. I think so. Okay. This is our last, last chance. Give us all the good vibes. All right, everybody, all of our friends at home, let's try and see if we can get these cars to crash. All right, three, two, one. Oh, Kim. But we can keep trying. Look, we could keep we trying. Come on and show us how it's done. Yes, exactly. We could use your help. So. <laughs> that was a nice end to this crash testing area. So we do have two crash test areas. So if you do visit the museum and this area is being used, we also have this area over here. And now I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite parts of this exhibit. And this is really where I can imagine the designer thinking about all of the things they wish they could do to play with Matchbox cars. Look at all these tracks. Wow. So we're not gonna show you all of these tracks because frankly, I think it's gonna be more fun for you to come and discover how these tracks work yourselves. But I still like to give you a little glimpse. So the last thing we're gonna do in Zoom Room, and then I'm gonna show you a brand new sculpture is this race right here. So you can see we have these different colored tracks and then these flags. So you can see which car wins the race by which flag moves first. So let's take a look at all these different colored tracks. I want you to predict which one you think might win the race. So again, I'll give you a view from the side as well. Do you think the blue one, the red, or the yellow, or purple. So you wanna think about the physical attributes. How does it look? Is it flat? Does it go up and down? Is it smooth? Well, this one, we don't have any textures on the tracks. We used to have that. <laughs> it's, coming. it's coming back. It's coming back, okay. So. All right, let me get to a place where we can see. So do you have in your head, everybody at home, which one you want to say is going to go down the track first? All right, let's count down from three. Three, two, one. Did you see who got first? I'm pretty sure that was purple. Woohoo. And then I think I saw blue shortly behind. All right. And if you look closely up here, I want to show something pretty nifty. A way that we can make this test accurate is this opening here. Kim doesn't have to hold all the cars. What she does is she puts it in front of that. And then can you point to the lever? Yeah. It's right here. So it's there's a lever. lever that she pulls. So you can come with a bunch of friends <laughs> and decide which car you think is going to go through first. So because we're scientists and we test things, let's give it another try. Okay. So on the countdown of three, three, two, one. Oh, that one I thought I kind of saw yellow go first. That was, that was quite close. That was a very close one. Should we do, should we do best two out of three? Yeah, let's yeah. do one more. One more. Glad we have all these cars up here. Hundreds of cars. Hundreds of cars in this exhibit. So many. All right, are we ready? All right, for the countdown of three. Three, two, one. Oh, see, that seems like it was more similar to the first one. I think it was, I think it was purple or yellow. 
Yeah, purple or yellow. Woo wee! That was quite a lot of fun in here, don't you think? Well, thank you so much, Kim and Alex, for helping in Zoom Room. So again, when we do reopen, Zoom Room will be here for you to play in. And now I am going to show you a brand new interactive sculpture that during the pandemic moved to our museum. So here we're passing the first floor of the schooner and up. Oh, do you see that there? That is our new sculpture that when you come into the museum, if you go up the stairs, you're greeted with it. And I am actually going to let my friend tell you about the sculpture. So Peter, could you introduce ourselves to our friends here? Yes, hi friends, I'm Peter. I'm the vice president of exhibits here at Chicago Children's Museum. And I have the good fortune of working with artists, designers, educators, community members, builders, tinkers, to create interactive exhibits here at the museum. And here we have an interactive hands-on exhibit consisting of a kinetic sculpture sculpture that moves and it was built and uh, created by Andrew Smith from Utah. Wow. In this exhibit, children, guests get to learn and play and, and, and explore physical science through these hands-on interactives. So why don't we take a look at some of these? Yeah, I was hoping that maybe you could show us three different kinds of simple machines. I'm sure I can, I know I can, and I, I <laughs> maybe even more than that. Yes. Why don't we start with this? This, this is a wedge. Simple machines are uh, devices that can do work uh, and have no, they have little or no moving parts and they make work easier. So this is a wedge. So a wedge works by pushing you have force that goes this way and it separates and moves things this way. Let's take a look at one yeah, in the sculpture. Very cool. In the sculpture, you can see a wedge placed right here on this track. And our guests can interact by turning this hand crank and bringing the wedge forward. And while it does that, that front flat edge of the wedge is lifting the chain. Ooh. Do you all see how that wedge is moving through as Peter turns the wheel? That's a really big chain. It's kind of like a chain on your bicycle. Yeah. But much, much larger. Yeah, it definitely looks heavier than a bike chain would be. Oh, and you can turn it both ways. And it looks like, Peter, too, there's something happening below the chain when you do that. Right, so this has the wedge, a wedge in it, but it also has, there's, this, there's many uh, simple machines throughout this sculpture, and some of them working together. Here, you have what's known as a screw. It's a screw, or an auger screw, specifically. And um, uh, some screws, such as this one, has, uh, ridges that are on the outside. And this one, the auger screw has the, the ridge, it goes into the shaft. So that's a, a, something that's a little different. Very cool. So you have a combination of the screw and the wedge working together along with a wheel to lift that chain. All right. And then I think, too, there was another place that you were showing me earlier about the screw. That's right. So the next thing we're going to look at is a way that uh, guests can send uh, billiard balls up into the sculpture. Oh, let's look for the billiard balls, everybody. Let's find those really quick. They're deep down inside there. And you can see a purple one straight across. OK. And so when you turn this crank, it turns that screw and turns the gear, that gearbox, which is then fed through a belt and wheels and axles to, to lift the All lift right. the balls up the inclined plane. And an inclined plane is another one of those simple machines. Oh, wow. Okay. So if you can see where that, I know it's maybe hard to see, but those billiard balls, if you can see that those are moving and then there's also, I always want to forget the name of the sec second machine you tell me about, the screw. 
So there you see the screw moving. Oh, I like the sounds it's making. And now we can watch where these billiard balls are going. Right, you can see force and motion happening. You can see incline planes. An incline plane is like a ramp that helps you bring things up and brings things down. Eventually the balls drop into the vortex and make their way around and get ready for the next guest. <laughs> Oh, wow. This is mesmerizing. <laughs> there are lots of things to look at and listen to and, and interact with in this kinetic sculpture. How about if we look at another one? So uh, you have wheel and axle. But when you combine a wheel and axle with a rope, it becomes a pulley. And a pulley helps you lift something up heavy by using gravity by pulling down on the rope. When you combine pulleys, it becomes a block and tackle and it makes the work even easier. It, you know, if you're trying to lift something that weighs 100 pounds and you have multiple pulleys, the amount of force is, is greatly reduced. Let's look at this. This one is here to, to lift this a uh, heavy ship's chain up and down. Let's take a look at a piece of that chain over here. Whoa, that is massive. It's, it's quite heavy. It would be on a, on a ship. So it's oh. an anchor up and down. And uh, it's, it is yeah. <laughs> right here. Get your workout just lifting that, huh? Here we have the wheel, so a block and tackle, a set of pulleys. And with a little bit of force for me, I'm able to lift it straight up. Oh, that looks so much easier. That's really incredible that that super heavy chain that you just lifted, now with the aid of a simple machine, the pulleys, you can lift it so much more easily. Look at that. And look how fast you're able to go too. So we've now learned about three simple machines and there's more in this sculpture too, right? Than just the three? Yeah, well, we talked about a wheel and axle in the pulleys. Here you can see a very large wheel and axle. Yes. So the wheel here that came from uh, irrigation system out in the Western States, United States, uh, wheels uh, lessen the amount of friction in order to move something. So this wheel's moving around. It's, it's, it's tied to that uh, uh, piece of a tricycle up there. And on this large wheel is a what's known as a cam that takes a circular motion and turns it into vertical motion. It's about to bump up on the wheel. Yeah, if you all look really closely, the wheel isn't perfectly smooth. See at the top, as it's coming towards us, there's that, that's the cam that Peter was talking about that bumps up that tricycle that from what I understand, then moves that large billiard ball, right. looks so like. And that's our, uh, our next simple machine after that is the lever. A lever is a, is a, is a length of, of, of rod or whatever, different material. Here it's this little bicycle and this uh, piece of sculpture. And there's a fulcrum so that you have a heavier weight on, on the left side, longer on the right, and the bump pushes it up on the fulcrum and you have leverage. Whew. And we're watching that ball go back and forth. <laughs> so you earlier today were also telling me about your favorite part of the sculpture. Could you yeah. share your favorite part with me? Sure, there's a lot of things I like about this. We really enjoyed working with Andrew to bring this uh, here to, uh, to our guests in Chicago. So, you know, and he has quite a collection of, of, of odd materials and pieces to use in his work. This piece I really like, it came from an old elevator. Ah. It's a big gearbox that was part of the uh, elevator. So you can imagine the amount of work that that machine could do with that large screw, the gears and sprockets that are all attached to that. 
And uh, so it's quite fun to watch. Another thing that I really like about this sculpture is that, well, the sculpture is part that you look at three dimensions. Yes. Right? You have your height, width, and depth. And you can walk around a sculpture and see it in different ways. And the placement of this sculpture is really unique because you can see it from uh, all different sides of the of, in the museum. Should we walk around? And look yeah, at some of let's take a walk. That's the beauty, I think, of these virtual tours as well, is that we are able to move. And I do want to take a moment to quickly apologize for my shaky camera skills. I am trying to hold steady, but I get so excited. It's so hard to be still. But here, oh, here's another great angle. Right, here we are at the top of our stairs that comes from floor one to floor two. And you can see uh, the, the large wheel over top of the stair attached to that steel beam and other parts. And we can walk further around and see it from uh, the other areas of the museum. So here, you, you know, you can, you can walk around and see it from different angles, but you can also see it from underneath as you're coming Ooh. up the stairs. You can actually see it from the staircase that goes up further, so you can see it from overhead. So really, more than just all the way around, you can see it from below and see it from overhead. So wow. that's really exciting. That is really exciting. And I also was wondering, does this sculpture have a name yet? You know, that's a good question. Uh, Andrew did not give us a name for his sculpture, and that's okay. And we were thinking that we would love to take suggestions from our guests. Uh, from people. And so we're going to be looking at a, a way soon to let everybody give us some suggestions of names that we can think about and come up with a name for this exhibit and for this sculpture. So oh, I hope awesome. that uh, maybe you'll have some ideas and you'll be able to contribute with that. Yeah. And I just want to let our you know participants know today too, that if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram, just look up Chicago Children's Museum. We'll definitely let you know when we're in the process of picking a name and that's when we'll really need your help because I think this sculpture deserves a name that matches its awesomeness. Yes. <laughs> and the last thing I'll ask before we move on to our daring climb is I was wondering how long this took to put inside the museum. What was that like? Well, our friend Andrew Smith, he worked on this for many, many months. I think it was more than a year to create this for us. And we started planning for it even well before that. But then once he came here with the, the, the sculpture in different parts, it, we worked for 20 days straight, assembling wow. it, making sure everything fit together right, it was tightened up well and, and looked good and worked well. And uh, so, yeah, it took a long time. And then we've been doing other work with it afterwards. But yeah, we worked 20 days straight with Andrew. That's incredible. Yeah, it's been so exciting to see this new sculpture in our museum. And I cannot wait for our friends to come back to the museum so we can really see how our friends and families here play with it. I feel the same way. Oh, yes. Well, thank you so much, Peter, for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. We are now going to move on to our last exhibit. You're very welcome. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. All right. Wasn't that exciting? It's so cool to see how things get built and added into the museum. We are now reaching our final experience together. So my friend Kim is going to tell us more about it. First, we have to find her. So I know she told me she would be inside the sculpture. So let's look, the well, sculpture, excuse me, the climber. So let's look around and see if we spot her. Does anybody see our friend Kim? Oh, I hear Kim. Oh, there she is. Hey, Kim. Now, there's a lot going on with this sculpture. Wow. Sculpture. Sculpture. That's true. That's true. Well, you know what, Kim? I am actually going to turn this over to you so you can tell us more about it. Okay. 
Hold on a second, guys. It's getting all blurry. Yep, I think Liz's camera is still, um, oh, I forgot the word. There we go. Tagged. Now we're gonna turn mine on in a moment. Okay, there we go. Oh, keep going back and forth. Okay, friends. So I want to show everybody Cloud Buster. And you probably noticed that Liz and I kept saying, sculpture, climber, sculpture, climber. And yeah, it's both. So this is also a collaboration with an artist. His name is Kevin Winters. And um, he's from um, Arizona and created this sculpture with us. Um, and it was built by, oh gosh, a team of people um, in the Chicagoland area. So this is called Cloud Buster. We do have a name for this one. And it was, um, it is three, well, no, 37 feet tall. So if you think about two and a half stories. So if you climb the outside of your house and your, out, your, your house was one story, two stories, plus an attic, that's how big Cloud Buster is. And it weighs about 30 tons. So about seven mm, average sized elephants. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take a climb um, up Cloud Buster and I want to show you one of the lookouts, which is pretty neat. So I am um, I actually have a camera on that enables me to use my feet and my hands because definitely this is um, an exhibit that's part of the Chicago Children's Museum. It's a little bit harder for adults to climb, but man, those, those kids have fun. So here I am walking up to the lookout. Um, I mentioned that Cloud Buster is about two and a half stories tall. However, Cloud Buster that's inside the Chicago Children's Museum um, is inside Navy Pier and we're actually a little bit higher um, if you look down into the pier. Um, another thing that you can find within Cloud Cluster are these great things, which are whisper tubes. So these tubes go from inside Cloud Buster to down below, kind of see right there. So let's see if we can talk to my friend Liz through here. Hey Liz! Okay, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> How, how's the view down there? It's really cool, but I'm really curious what the view is like from up there. Oh, come on, come on up. Let's check it out. So as we wait for my friend Liz to climb on up, adjust this a little bit. Um, one thing you want to say that's really cool about our Cloud Buster sculpture is that there are many, so many ways to interact with it. Um, there are many different ways to get up. There's many ways to um, climb around. So right now I'm climbing down one of these beautiful um, mesh metal tubes. We also have this amazing sculpture right here, um, which has these beautiful, like I like to call it portholes. You might notice my voice just changed inside this space. So you can climb that, climb up and down. Oh, I think there's like seven switchbacks on that. That's kind of not my thing. I'm gonna definitely stay in some of the bigger places. Oh, hello, Liz. Oh, how you doing? Oh, Liz, you know, one thing I forgot, but that you have that I would love to point out is um, Liz has her helmet on. So we do have helmets for the space. Um, one reason why we have helmets is as a precaution. So as you are navigating the space, you can really focus on navigating. And there's some definitely some cr um, crawls in the space too. So it's a nice precaution for that. Okay, Liz, I was talking a little bit about choices within the space. So there's many different choices you can, um, you can decide on where to climb. Um, so we could go back where Liz is at, um, with, which is a part of these three concentric circles, or I was thinking we can go over here, which there is this wooden tube and we can just climb up that way. Where do you think we should go? Ooh, I'm thinking the wooden tube sounds really interesting. I'd like to try that. Okay, let's give it a try. So we're gonna go this way. Um, I mentioned these concentric circles um, and the artist we worked with, um, Kevin. 
So Kevin actually took inspiration from Fermilab, um, which is in Chicagoland area and is a particle accelerator. So you can um, tell your family and friends when you come visit us that you got to climb in um, a sculpture inspired by a particle accelerator, which is pretty <laughs> neat. Oh, particle accelerator. Okay, I'm gonna climb on up. Um, I'm gonna use, I need to use two hands, two feet. That's what we're talking about. It's nice to have a helmet on. And I'm gonna climb through the space. My camera might be a little bit wiggly. I can't hold on to it right now. Here we go. And here we are in this, oh, beautiful blue space too. So you can probably see that on my camera. Come back up, up over here. There you go. Liz, thank you for joining me. Yeah, it's so fun. Mm -hmm. So another really neat thing about Cloudbuster, yes, climbing is amazing, um, but there's lots of little, what we like to call surprises or gems in the space. So as you look, probably a little bit hard to see now, friends, but as you look, there are some places where I see all these little miniature clocks. I see some ducks over there. I see another orange whisper tube so I can talk to some people down below. So as you climb through the space, really take a moment and look and pause. I definitely am I'm appreciating, Liz, that we're taking a pause right now Yeah. in the space. Oof. So I talked about lookouts. There's definitely a lookout over here. This is one of our, our lower lookouts. And then I'm super excited about right here, if you look up, Oh, wow. There is this big tube that actually overhangs Navy Pier. So, Liz, what do you think? I um, would you like to come up here with me, or um, what do you think? What are you gonna do? <laughs> Thank you, Kim, for asking me because the route that you're about to take tends to be a little bit more scary. And you know, I think today I might opt for the less the less high up. So I think I'm going to take the other route. Okay, so Liz is going to go another route. I am going to try this route. And that's what we're talking about with choices. So Liz has her choice. I have my choice. That's totally fine. Um, before I climb up there, I just really want you to show, show, off, show off this lookout. So again, you can see uh, what in the Navy Pier is called the family pavilion. So there's a lot of cool stuff for the family in the pier in this area. And there's also, it's called the Crystal Garden. So if you look ahead, you can see all these beautiful trees and it's kind of like an, um, a conservatory, small, 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 small one that is open all year round. Um, so when we're open, you're welcome to check out that space as well. Yeah. So I am going to start climbing up here. I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit so everyone can kind of see the climb, oh, wrong way. The cool thing is, is when you are doing the cloud cluster, you don't have to wear a camera while doing this. <laughs> um, we do suggest that if you are going the climb buster, cloud buster, you have your all your hands, all your feet ready to climb. So if you have bags or a cell phone, um, leave them down below. We have some cubbies that you can stick those in. Oh, another question that people have asked, how old do you have to be to be in the space? If you can try to wear a helmet, if you can, if you want to climb, we say give it a try. It's kind of up to you. Okay, here we go up the space. And yes, I am definitely using all my hands, all my feet. I'm using some knees here too. So again, it's really up to you friends if you want to do this space and you can see how high up I am. I have done this climb a few times this past couple days, so I'm getting used to it. Um, anyone who's been working from home and wants to get a workout, good way, good to work out too. Oh, Liz, I see you up there, hello. I'm coming up, I'm coming up. This to our, I would say this is our like last lookout. So we got three beautiful lookouts. This is our highest as well. Here I come. You did it, Karen. Thank you, thank you. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Um, I definitely want to show all our friends 
our lookout over here. So yeah, so again, we're two and a half stories up now in terms of the cloud buster, but we're a lot higher um, in terms of the um, family pavilion at Navy Pier. And you know, we're so up high that our little, we like to call it our little house right here. We can't have a lawn on the ground, so we stuck the lawn on the walls. So <laughs> we're making it happen. We're got, we need that green space in there. And I keep, I'm going to keep my, yeah, keep your mic on. Keep my mic on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to work with the team. Yeah. So I'm going to go inside the house here and a little bit of view of that. Oh, friends, we are doing pretty good with time. I just want to thank all of you for sticking with us. We got to play in Zoom room play with physical science. So we were um, making observations, making predictions and reflecting on that. You got to um, do a tour with Peter of our new Simple Machines um, sculpture. Again, we invite you to check us out because we'll be asking for some help to name that pretty yeah. soon. And then you got to climb with Liz and I. We hope you come in and get, and get your own um, physical daring workout with your own choices in, um, our cloud buster. So Liz, anything else you would like to add before we sign up? Okay, Liz is gonna add something. Something I thought about too, is that if any of our friends that attended today come to the museum in the future, they might see you or myself here at the museum. So I usually hang out in the art studio, making art with people, and Kim is sometimes there, and Kim is mostly where. So I'm also in our tinkering lab space. So if you think about STEM, so that science, technology, engineering, math, if you want a reflections, great place to come as well. Oh, again, thank you guys all for joining us. There might um, be some little questions in the chat. We're gonna turn our mics off, but if you want to view um, us climbing down the, cl the cloud buster, you can. Um, and again, I know Natalie is, um, is furiously typing um, any Q&As that come up as well. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon. Au revoir. Goodbye. Adios. Saitien. Arrivederci. I'm going to think I've been... OK, well, thank you to our new friends at the Chicago Children's Museum. Um, who so grateful, graciously took us through that tour today. I'm watching her kind of slide down and it's making me kind of dizzy. Um, thank you guys also for hanging out with us today. Um, they did a great job with their camera work. Uh, COVID has brought plenty of new challenges um, for all of us. And I think they did a great job um, with what we have bringing us through the museum. And I'm really excited to go and visit when they reopen, hopefully this summer. If you guys have questions and you're still hanging around, feel free to put them in the Q&A. We have a few more minutes that we'll stick around and answer those for you. Let's see. Um, otherwise, there will be a short survey that you can fill out after I end the webinar and a recording of this program will go up on AAPLD's YouTube channel within the next couple of days. Let's see if we have anything here. Okay. So if any of our CCM staff are listening, so I think lots of people probably want to know what else the museum offers. Can you guys talk a little bit about um, the different areas that you guys that you guys have there? Well, hello. <laughs> it is Kim and myself again. So the museum and Zoom room, we have Play It Safe, a fire play safety area. We have a giant fire engine. It's super fun. Then we also have, oh gosh, a skyline where you can build skyscrapers. And then maybe you can tell, yeah. I'm a little breathless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's facing the other way. So it was all right. Oh, I'm taking things off, off out of list hands. Um, so we, yes, we have the skyline exhibit. We have our, um, 
um, capitals really littles, like five and under, that's a great place to bring them. Um, so we do have, yeah, this was, so we mentioned three exhibits out of um, over 10 that we have at the museum. So this was just like a small sneak peek. And we have a whole museum. other floor. So we were only on one floor today <laughs> and not even the whole floor. So you only saw the half of the first floor of the museum. Mm -hmm. And the second floor is even bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, so Treehouse Trails, which is, um, I like to say it's like a little kid version of um, an, a, camping, a camping night out. Yes. Um, it's a little cabin as well. I like camping, I'm not a camping. <laughs> and then we have um, Kids Town, probably understand what that is. So it's me, um, grocery store, um, ride the CTA bus, be a bus, dri bus driver, um, do a car wash. So there's many things to do in that in that kids town space as well. Yeah. Beautiful question. Thank you for Yeah, for great me. question. Ask that question. Thank you guys. Okay. So at this time, um, we're going to wrap things up again. Thank you so much for attending today's program. I want to remind you guys that cultural institutions like the Chicago Children's Museum and all the others that we've visited on our virtual tour series are made possible by the support of their communities. Um, so please keep that in mind. Visit them online for updates on when they'll be reopening. And um, I'm sure that they have plenty of information on the different exhibits that they house online as well for you guys to check out. All right. Well, thank you guys all for attending. Thank you again to the staff at Chicago Children's Museum. Um, I think everybody had a lot of fun, as did I. And I hope to see you all again soon. Everybody have a good day.